Hi guys and welcome to another ESP8266 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about running a web server on the Espruino JavaScript runtime running on the ESP8266. So Espruino allows us to run JavaScript. Uh, this is an example of a piece of JavaScript and it allows us to take advantage of all the Espruino available libraries. So if we look at the Espruino uh, reference documentation, we find there's a class called HTTP. And HTTP allows us to register a web server. And this web server is registered with a callback. And the callback function is called whenever a browser sends in a client-side request. Now, all of that is lots of, lots of gobbledygook speak. Let's look at it in action. So here is a JavaScript sample application. The code of this, one should read it as, first of all, define a function called bServer. And we'll talk about bServer in great depth, but for right now, imagine that lines 1 through 28, all of these lines define a function called bServer. Uh, lines 27 to 28 here set up my SSID and password. We require access to Wi-Fi. We print a statement saying that we're connecting to the access point, And then we actually perform a connection from our JavaScript application to the Wi-Fi access point. This then connects us to our network. We check if there was an error connecting to the network. If there, if there was, we log and return. And if there wasn't, then we call the function bServer. And so at a high level, this connects us to the Wi-Fi access point. Uh, and then once we're connected and hence have an IP address, we can become a server. So what does bServer do? bServer requires the HTTP modules and then says create a server. Now this whole function here creates as a server. And once the server has been created, we ask the server to listen on port 80, and then that's the end of that work. Now we have a server listening on port number 80, which is the default HTTP port. When a browser request arrives at that server, the callback function that we register to the HTTP server definition, it then gets invoked, and it gets passed in a request object and a response object. Now the request object is logged to the console, that's just for debugging, and then we look at the URL passed in on the request. Uh, if the request was for the default icon, we just do nothing say it wasn't found. This is the more interesting one. Here we immediately write back in the response, the beginning of an HTML response, and then depending upon what the URL was, we write different text into the HTML output stream sent back to the browser. And then at the conclusion of that, we set, we conclude the HTML page. So if we look through this code, when an HTML request for hello arrives, we should put up a welcome message. When an HTML request for goodbye arrives, we should put up a goodbye message. Otherwise, we get a didn't understand message. So you can pause the video at this point and have a good long read through that code if you want. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run it. So by clicking the run button, that pushes this uh, JavaScript program out to Espruino. And we're starting to get messages from it connecting to the access point. Once we're connected to the access point, uh, we get back a message saying that we are now connected. Here's our IP address that was allocated by the access point and the port we're going to listen on. And it now says we're being an HTTP server. And that's it. Now if I bring up a browser, and I'll move this window smaller over here. If I point my browser to HTTP 192.168.1.4 uh, slash hello and hit the enter key, we get back a message that says, welcome to the ESP8266 test. And that's the message that came from here. If we say goodbye, we'll get a message that says, goodbye, please come back again soon. There it is. And finally, if we put in 
no URL at all, it'll go to the default, which is sorry, I didn't understand. Now, for those technical amongst us, if we look at the request message arriving from the browser, we see that in JavaScript, we have access to all of the data that was passed in. So we got all of the request message data, uh, including the host IP address, the connection, and all the other good things that we might want to see in an HTTP request. And really, it really is as simple as that. Uh, within your code, you connect to the Wi-Fi environment. Once you're connected to the Wi-Fi environment, you create a server instance object. We then say that that instance should listen on port 80 and we're done. Then when client requests, browser requests come in, we can look at the request object to figure out the URL and then we can write to the response object and put in the output stream that we want to send back to the browser as HTML data. Obviously, if we wanted to retrieve the data, the pages that we wanted to send back to the browser, we could read those from flash memory or we could read those from uh, uh, an SD card or we could calculate a response. We could dynamically query GPIO pins. I mean, this is this is the the elegance and the style and the art of programming. You can basically do whatever you want to write into the response data going back to the browser. All right, that's it. Uh, as you see, pretty simple. I uh, hope you found something useful here. And once again, thanks for listening. And I'll be back with more technical tutorials in the future. Thanks now. Bye-bye.